Hello everyone, welcome to Switch Up, as we once again have a look at 10 of the games coming out on the Switch in this upcoming week. The dates we'll be going from are the 24th of October up until the 30th, which is next Friday. And actually this looks like a very good week, we've got a nice mix of blasts from the past, decent looking sequels, a Nintendo first party game, plus a few spooky ones, bearing in mind Halloween is next Saturday. As with last week, I'm going to have a quick look first at a couple of games that dropped without being covered in an upcoming list for whatever reason, before we then get on to the 10 main features of the list. Okay, with all that said, let's get started. First of the games already out then, this is Shantae Risky's Revenge, the director's cut, a game which of course was originally on DSiWare a good few years ago now. This, as is the case with most of the Shantae games, is a Metroidvania where you use her powers of transformation, usually into a variety of animals, to traverse levels and make your way across certain obstacles, obviously returning to certain areas later with said power in tow. This is selling for a very cheap price of just £7.59 and a good friend of mine, Dave Morris, who writes for us sometimes, has done a review of this on his own channel and I will put a link to that in the top in comment if you want a bit more information. Next up then we have Mario Kart Live Home Circuit. Now we were going to do a dedicated video on this, Nintendo did send us one of the carts, but as Mark mentioned in his video on Sunday, he and his wife were expecting the imminent arrival of their third child, and I'm delighted to say that they have since arrived, so congratulations to you Mark and Bethan. But that kind of put a spanner in the works of that video as they sent it to Mark's house, and we unfortunately, in our area, are back in a local lockdown due to the ongoing pandemic, which makes it very hard for me to do the video either. But I will give you some of our thoughts on it, based on the time Mark has played with it with his children. It's Nintendo at their absolute creative best. The technology works very well, it's actually very impressive. The way that you can set up the tracks within your home and see it on the screen is great. Space could be an issue for you depending on how big your house is or how much space you have, although it is possible to create some decent tracks with limited space and of course that price at 100 odd pounds is pretty high, but I can definitely see this being a very good seller around Christmas time. And then we have Crown Trick which is published by Team17, selling for £14.99. This is an RPG adventure game but it also says it has roguelike elements. I'll tell you what it does have and that's a beautiful hand drawn art style, as well as a huge amount of abilities and items for you to find and use. The first of this week's upcoming games then and starting off on a very good foot, this is Oddworld New and Tasty. Now I think I'm right in saying this is a remake of the original game, Abe's Odyssey, which came out on the PlayStation back in the 90s, was it about 97 I think? But this remake itself came out back in 2014 on other consoles. This was a complete ground up remake rather than a remaster, with brand new modernised graphics and improved controls, and it seems to go for more of a 2.5D style in terms of the graphics these days. It's going to sell for £26.99, although there is a 33% discount off of that price up until the 2nd of November. And I think this one's also getting a physical version too, which is nice. Delicious action. And an aftertaste to die for. Next we have Dungreed out on the 27th, and this sees you taking on the role of an adventurer who must explore a continuously evolving dungeon. You will find a variety of weapons and must defeat a host of enemies on your way. I'm pretty sure I'm right in saying this is a roguelite dungeon crawler, judging by the screenshots on the eShop, there isn't a trailer just yet. It looks very much like Rogue Legacy in some respects, although there do seem to be some areas where you play from a top-down perspective instead. There are a host of these type of games on the Switch now, roguelites really are the flavour of the day at the minute, but that's not to say it won't be a good game, and if it interests you it will sell for £13.49 or your regional equivalent. Then on the 28th we have Oceanhorn 2 Knights of the Lost Realm. Its predecessor Oceanhorn is already on the Switch, in fact it was one of the first digital games I bought when I got my Switch, along with Blaster Master. And whilst that paid homage to Zelda games of the past, albeit played from an isometric view, this is more of a third person adventure game and has striking similarities, I don't think it's unfair to say, to Breath of the Wild. This game has already been out, I think it's on Apple Arcade as an exclusive, and it promises an RPG with 20 hours worth of gameplay, huge boss fights, side quests to partake in, puzzles to solve, and dungeons to explore. It's going to sell for £29.99, and as I said, it's coming out on the 28th.
Next is the first of the horror themed games with Halloween just on the horizon. This is Red Rope Don't Fall Behind Plus. This has been out for a few years elsewhere and as far as I can see it's a game where you are tied to another person by the titular Red Rope and must work together to survive a variety of dangerous locations. It looks as if you have to try and wrap yourselves around enemies to defeat them coordinating that 360 degree turn between you to make sure that you succeed or I'm assuming die. It's selling for £11.99 and might be a fun and freaky co-op game to play on Halloween. And next we have another horror themed game, this is Yuppie Psycho Executive Edition. Now Yuppie Psycho has been out on Steam for a little while and has very good scores over there as well as on Metacritic where its score is up in the 80s and sees you having to quite literally survive your first day in a new job. Your character Brian finds out that his first role in this new job is to try and hunt a witch. And it also says you'll have to do things such as learning office protocol, learning when to chat and when to work, engaging water cooler conversations, as well as things like finding clues and solving riddles. I know very little about this game, it does sound a lot of fun though, and as I said it has good scores elsewhere. If you have played it before, perhaps let us know in the comments section what it's all about. Out on the 29th you have the Angry Video Game Nerd 1 and 2 Deluxe Edition. These games are of course based on the very popular character portrayed by James Rolfe here on YouTube. Based on that classic idea of NES Hard, Nintendo Hard as it was called, and whilst they do mock bad games, the games themselves, at least the first one I played on the 3DS, is actually very good with very tight controls. There are certainly frustrating moments and there are times where it does start to edge that line towards unfair but on the whole they're actually very solid platformers. £13.49 for the two games doesn't sound too bad to be fair and as I said this comes out on the 29th. And then quite possibly the strangest release I've seen in a while this is Who Wants To Be A Millionaire. Now there's been plenty of games based on this show before. I can remember versions of this being back on the PS1 for example but is this show even on TV anymore? I remember a good 20 years ago now, sitting around the girl's house that I was seeing at the time as her mum and dad watched this on the telly and being bored out of my skull as Chris Tarrant asked yet another contestant whether they wanted to ask the audience because they didn't know whether it was Blur or Oasis that sang Parklife. You've got 15 questions to try and answer with 4 available answers to pick from with the aim of course being to try and win that million pounds. You can play with up to 10 players, I'm assuming you all have to answer that question fastest at the beginning and it's selling for £35.99 dear me. There we go, if you want to party back like it's 1999, this is the game for you. And then the pick of the week as far as I and I'm sure many others as well will be concerned, this is Pikmin 3 Deluxe. Now yes of course it is a port from a Wii U game, I know a lot of people don't like that, but this was the reason I bought a Wii U for this one game. I'm a huge Pikmin fan, I love all three games. I liked this one because the collectible that you were after was something consumable. It was fruit and as much as you had to collect them, you had to eat them as well to keep yourself going. You had the three different characters to choose from, a couple of new Pikmin types added as well and the game just looked beautiful, it really did. I'll be interested to see what they do with this one in terms of not having the gamepad anymore, not that it was ever essential for gameplay but even so. And of course that price of £49.99 is very high but in terms of the quality of the game it is absolutely fantastic. The penultimate game for the week then, this is Mad Rat Dead, published by NIS America. This sells for £35.99, comes out on the 30th and also does have a demo available if you want to try that first. As far as I can ascertain, again it doesn't have a trailer on the eShop which is a shame, this is a rhythm game where you play as a rat who dies but is then brought back to life and you have to keep him alive so he can fulfil things on his bucket list by matching the beat of his heart to the prompts on the screen. NIS America always publish quite interesting games but they do publish them at very high prices and sometimes they do miss the mark in terms of what they were going for. Like I said though this one does have a demo so it might be worth giving that a try.
And finally for the week then, let's end with a horror game. This is Case 2 Animatronic Survival. This game has been available elsewhere and I thought it was an online game where you had someone taking on the role of the animatronic animal and you had to stealth your way past them and not get seen. But judging by the eShop listing, it doesn't say that you play this online, it just says it's a one player experience. Either way, it says there are a variety of different game locations, you need to watch security cameras, manage and monitor the situation, solving new puzzles, all the while making sure you don't get caught. I'm assuming it's very much like Five Nights at Freddy's. Anyway, if you do know more about this one, let us know. And if you're interested, it's selling for £26.99. So there you have it, there's 10 games for the week. I actually think this is a pretty decent week. You've got Oddworld, Pikmin 3 absolutely, Oceanhorn 2 maybe of interest to some people, as well as a few horror based games thrown in there as well. Let us know if you're picking any of these up, do any of them interest you? If you have knowledge on some of the ones that you've already played, please do share it with us. A quick thank you to our Patreons as always for your continued support, and to each and every one of you for watching our videos. Take care, stay safe, and until next time, happy gaming.